Hi, I'm Brock Lights, the guy that runs the internet. I'm here to talk to you about redundancy. In any system, anyone can get something running once. It's the professional that gets it able to run if something fails, to have failover and able to have it reroute or have some kind of redundancy so you can sleep at night. That's what the tough part is. In this video, we're gonna talk about all the different types of redundancy in the modern ISP network, and we're gonna go over how all those different types of things are accomplished. And in my last video, or a few videos ago, I talked about uh, putting a toaster in water, but no one believed me that I actually did it. So here to show you, I'm gonna take a light, regular light, water, and put it in it. I'm still on, and I'm not dead. A modern chip has billions of transistors, and if any of those fail, so can your network. When you at home reboot your router, you take yourself offline. You stop watching mo your movie, and it's an inconvenience. But if I reboot a router, I take everyone offline. I can take thousands of people easily by rebooting the wrong piece of equipment, and that's something that we can't have. So we're gonna talk about different types of redundancies. We're gonna talk about facilities, which is the main thing because everything has to go through some kind of data center. We're gonna talk about your network, your power, and your systems, because all of these have to be running 100% of the time, or you can't run a credit card, or you can't do anything, you can't watch a movie. You're gonna have a bad time on, as an internet experience if any of these things fail. So this is what I do to prevent them from failing. So facilities, meaning the data centers, have to be fully redundant in a lot of different components. The main components are your HVAC, which is your heating and cooling, all your uh, humidity regulations, and uh, the airflow, there's a lot of stuff to make sure that, because if these things aren't cooled, they'll just shut down and then you'll have a network outage. Uh, power is probably the most critical part. Without power, you can't run anything. So we have systems that back up to back up to back up, and I'll show you why you actually have two power sources in the back of a modern server, in case you ever wondered. And then finally, your physical security. So you're gonna have like a lot of cameras, you're gonna have card systems, you're gonna have logs of who's doing things when, and you have to have them running all the time because the internet never sleeps. This part of the video, we're going to go over all the different parts of uh, making something fully redundant. So here we are inside one of our data center rooms where this room has 100 tons of cooling in it, which is made up of two uh, 40, K 40 ton units of cooling and one 20 ton unit. The reason we have independent units and having one giant system is we can take one down without a problem. The other thing that the uh, units do are provide uh, humidity control. The higher humidity you have, the less static buildup. What that means is the less shock and risk to the machines that'll happen. You don't want too much humidity or else you'll actually create a uh, rainstorm inside of here. If you don't want too little, you'll get sparking whatever you do. And finally, what these things here do that contain all these units, these are called hot owl containment units. What they do is they take the return from the AC and all the cool air goes out to the front of the rack. They get sucked to the back and where it gets hot again, and then it gets sucked up where uh, it ultimately gets cool again and returns out the other side. So a constant flow of cool air to hot air make it cool again, and then push it back down. So here, out here, we have our generator form. If the power goes out, something has to be able to kick in. These are our generators. We actually have two of them, because if one fails, you're still gonna be in a world of hurt. So here we have our main generator and our redundant generator. Both of these uh, keep everything up while power goes out until it's restored, but they don't kick in automatically. So another part of the system is a UPS. These are batteries. These just hold it for a short time. All they do is hold it for a few seconds until these things powered up. In here is one of the electrical rooms, and this is what's called an ATS or automatic transfer switch. So the power comes into the building through multiple transformers. The transformers, if those go out, they go to the generator. You can't have the transformer 
and the generator running at the same time. They go to this machine here, which cuts over between the transformer to the generator when it spins up. UPS system, which stands for uninterruptible power supply, which is pretty much just batteries. So this also cleans the power that comes in. So this will hold it just for a few minutes, just long enough for the generators to spin up and start supplying power directly. And then it starts to recharge the batteries again. So out of the generator goes to the UPS. The UPS goes into circuits that come back into the server room. And the server room has an A leg and a B leg going to each independent power system with each independent UPS and each independent generator. Now these legs ultimately feed into two different PDUs or power distribution units inside of each cabinet. And then your server oftentimes has two separate power legs. And then it's able to maintain power even if one leg goes down, it's able to stay up in the event of failure. So we went over the power. We went over the HVAC systems and the temperature control and humidity control. Now, we also need network. So one of the things we have here are multiple egress points for our network. We have fiber optic cables that go out through different manhole covers, which is critical because in Vegas we get a lot of drunk drivers. So it's inevitable that someone hits a pylon and causes a fiber connection to go down. It actually happens quite a bit. So when we have these things going into the facility, we make sure that whenever we bring a new fiber cable in, we bring it in through a different path. We also have microwave connections between both our facilities that allow us to keep up even if a fiber connection gets served. Finally, the main thing that allows us to keep great uptimes is we have multiple facilities with it. The same thing that I just showed you over here, about three miles away. Being three miles allows for any kind of disaster uh, us to recover from that. When we build a network, we have to make sure the router has multiple cable connections going into it. If, in case we have to rerun a network path or one cable, uh, we got to upgrade an individual part. We create cable, multiple cable bonds going into every one of our pieces of equipment. And then we have multiple routers that enable us to do failover in case we got to do maintenance or upgrade software on, on it. Getting the network out of here into people's homes, we usually try to build a network in a ring. A ring topology, if this is our data center, allows us to actually cut the ring at any time and network traffic will just flow that way or that way. If we did a line topology, like we just had a network that went out to this place that then linked to this place and then linked to that, if this link goes down, there are a lot of customers down. Here we have one of our core routers and it has multiple redundant supervisor cards. So I can pull one of these out and everything on the backbone will fail over seamlessly within milliseconds. Nothing will happen. So one of the things are like your small servers, like your DNS server, your uh, time servers, you have a bunch of internal uh, servers that probably do your payroll and accounting. Well, all these might not seem super critical, but if they go down at the wrong time, there's a thing called a RPO and RTO, which is your recovery point objective. And that's at what point you want to be able to fail from. Say something fails at 3 a.m., how far back in time do you want to go? Do you want to be able to recover from midnight? Do you want to be able to recover from 11? Do you want to be able to lose just a few minutes? At some point, you're going to lose some sort of data. You got to be able to state what the recovery point objective is and how quickly you want to be able to go. And the quicker and, and faster you go of all these with less data you move, the more it costs. So we use things called a storage area network, which is actually all your hard drives and data. And that I have replicate over to one of my other data centers and vice versa. That side also has these applications running that are running over to here. These are the actual hard drives which have RAID and have all the other redundant arrays of disks. And they actually, if something fails, will call people to come replace them. When they fail and they get replaced, they rebuild and they resync. And it's usually not a big deal. Here we have a modern sand system that connects to blades. These blades have uh, up to hundreds of servers on each one. And the storage is actually over here. These don't have anything other than a VMware to boot. And then they'll run all their storage off of here. In the event of failure, the VMware system will know and automatically bring something up in my other data center. Once you have all that redundancy and you have everything that fails over, 
then you have to set up some sort of monitor because you're no longer going to get alerts if something fails because something else is going to take over for it. So then you have to monitor each subcomponent to see if that has failed. The advantages of those are numerous though. Uh, once you do that and you have statistics, should you have something that, that isn't running right, well you could easily take it out of the equation by having it fail over to something else and see if it was a hardware failure or a software failure or just a configuration error. The other thing lastly we do to ensure that everything is up and running to spec are independent audits. We get a SOC audit or statement of control audit every year. That means that we have independent auditors come in and check everything that we do and make sure that it is to our specifications, all our logs are correct, all our video storage is right, all our uh, access logs and everything else that we do is actually as we state to our customers and we uh, fulfill what we are required to do. The cost of redundancy isn't just getting another system. You often have to figure out how to get it to fail over. That's the work of a professional. And getting it to do it is often not just times two cost, it's usually times two or three or four times cost because you often need licensing, you need some kind of machine to do the failover, or you have to have something that actually fails back. It just gets really complicated depending on the system. But it's worth it if you ever want to sleep at night because I get alerts all the time that things failed. But this way, I can fix it on my time. I don't have to get up in the middle of the night and go fix something at 3 a.m. Thank you.